Hello everyone! First and foremost, thank you for watching yung part 1 ng sale discussion. Your views, thank you messages and likes encourages us to really continue with this. Despite the fact na marami talagang pinagkakabalahan. Anyway, our discussion today is the second part of nature and form of the contract of sale. That is Article 1466 to Article 1474. Article 1466. In construing a contract containing provisions characteristic of both the contract of sale and of the contract of agency to sell, the essential clauses of the whole instrument shall be considered. So this is contract of sale versus agency to sell. Now, Article 1466 provides that in order to classify a contract, kung sale ba siya or agency to sell, due regard must be given to its essential clauses, di ba? Essential clauses of the whole instrument shall be considered, sabi pa nga. And so, first, let's differentiate muna itong contract of sale versus the agency to sell. First, dito sa kay contract of sale, the buyer pays the price. Kay agency to sell, the agent delivers. Okay? Diniliver niya lang yung price which he got from the buyer. Now, sa kay contract of sale, the buyer after delivery becomes the owner of that thing. Pero sa agency to sell, yung agent he does not become the owner of that thing. Kahit pa nga na-deliver na sa kanya yung property or yung thing na yun, hindi niya naman yung binili because he is just an agent. So, the owner is still the buyer. Okay? Another, the seller warrants. Whereas, sa agency to sell, wala yun, okay? The agent who sell assumes no personal liability. As long as he acts within his authority and in the name of the principal. So long as hindi talaga siya na go beyond his authority, then he assumes no personal liability. Okay? So, example ganito. If si Pogi is a shoe manufacturer and Ganda is a shoe shop owner, they entered into a contract with these stipulations, okay? Number one, sabi, Ganda shall order from Pogi 100 pairs of shoes every month. And Ganda shall resell the shoes at Pogi's suggested retail price. Third, all the unsold pair of shoes at the end of the year shall be bought back by Pogi at the same price they were ordered, and fourth, Pogi shall hold Ganda, free from any claim for defects in the shoes. So, question, is the transaction a contract of sale or an agency to sell? So, obviously, this is a contract of agency to sell. Ang sabi nga ni Article 1466, in construing a contract containing provisions characteristic of both the contract of sale and of the contract of agency to sell, the essential clauses of the whole instrument shall be considered. Hindi ba nga, the very essence of a contract of sale is the transfer of ownership over a thing in exchange of the price, right? So, dito sa kontrata nila, may mga clauses which negates the very essence of a contract of sale. Una, yung selling price ng shop owner is fixed by the manufacturer, right? Tapos, si manufacturer reacquires the unsold shoes at the exact 
diba? at exactly the same price they were ordered. And then third, the manufacturer is the one liable for the warranty of the shoes. So, makikita talaga natin na hindi naman nila intention na mag-transfer ng ownership sa mga shoes, right? So, this is not a contract of sale, but an agency to sell, okay? Now, let's discuss in passing itong sale through an agent. In general, pwede naman talaga mag-enter into a contract of sale ang buyer and seller through an agent. Kung saan nga, ang authority can be verbal or in writing unless nag-require ng ang batas ng particular form, uh, yung verbal authority is okay din naman. Okay? Example, Pogi wanted to buy a laptop. Kaso, nas probinsya siya. And so, he calls Ganda, who is in one of the mall in Metro Manila. Ganda accepts the request. Then, that is already a contract of agency. Kung saan ang purpose is to buy a laptop in the mall in behalf of Poggy. Okay? It's as simple as that. Pero paano nga if the sale is entered into by one who has no authority or has acted beyond his powers? Paano? Remember Article 1403. Unenforceable contracts. Yes. You are right. You have to correlate to the loss. Huwag niyong kalimutan yung mga previous discussion. It would really be helpful. So, let's proceed with Article 1467. Article 1467, a contract for the delivery at a certain price of an article which the vendor in the ordinary course of his business manufactures or procures for the general market. Whether the same is on hand at a time or not, is a contract of sale. But if the goods are to be manufactured especially for the customer and upon his special order, and not for the general market, it is a contract for a piece of work. Article 1467. The rules to determine if the contract is sale or a contract for piece of work. It's as simple as, if it was ordered in the ordinary course of business, then that is sale. But if it is manufactured especially, okay, not for the general market, but it is manufactured especially, then that is piece of work. So, example, if Poggies entered into a separate contract with Ganda, yung agreement was that, Si Pogi shall deliver at a specified date for a price of 1,000 pesos. Isang pair pa rin ng sapatos uh, of a specified brand which the store had been manufacturing for the general public. But during that time, it was sold out. Okay? So, walang available stacks. And so, Pogi will deliver that shoes on October 15. Kasi on the other hand, yung kontrata naman with beauty is that Poggy will deliver on a specified date, say October 15 pa rin, for a price of 2,000 pesos, a pair of shoes to be made specially for beauty. Kasi pala itong paa ni beauty was deformed and so the design of that shoes was actually in accordance with the design submitted by Beauty. Kung ano yung pwede talaga sa paanya. Now, question. What are the nature of these two contracts? So, the answer is that between Poggy and Ganda, the contract is a sale. Bakit? Kasi... The goods she ordered are procured in the ordinary course of business. Only they are out of stock at that time, diba? So since the seller intends to manufacture it again, it is considered as a contract of sale. It is open for the general public naman. Yung contrata naman between Poggy and Beauty is a contract of for piece of work. Bakit? Kasi 
they are specially ordered by the buyer and is actually not procured in the ordinary course of business to think that it should be made especially designed for the deformed feet of beauty okay so that's it that's a good example for article 1467 let's proceed with article 1468 if the consideration of the contract consists partly in money and partly in another thing the transaction shall be characterized by the manifest intention of the parties if such intention does not clearly appear it shall be considered barter if the value of the thing given as a part of the consideration exceeds the amount of the money or its equivalent otherwise it is a sale so barter okay barter is actually a contract wherein yung isang party he binds himself to give one thing in consideration of the other's promise to give another thing, okay? Parang palitan ng mga bagay-bagay. So, eto, rules in sale and barter. Yung barter and exchange at yung sale actually are similar. Kasi, after all, pareho naman silang governed ng law on sales. Yung difference lang talaga nila is on the consideration. Kasi sa barter and exchange, yung consideration is a another determinate thing. Instead of a price certain in money or its equivalent, di ba? Kung sa sale, yung consideration is a price certain in money or its equivalent, sa barter, it is still giving of another determinate thing okay ito yung rule if yung consideration is partly in money and partly in another thing sabi ni article 1468 the intention of the parties will control the situation sabi nga shall be characterized by the manifest intention of the parties so, kung anong kontrata ba ang intention gawin ng parties, then, yun siya, okay? However, if the intention does not appear, dito naman talaga yung question, kung wala, hindi mo makikita sa intention ng parties kung ano ba talaga, is it sale or is it barter? Ang sabi ni Article 1468, barter, if yung value ng thing is more than the monetary consideration and it is sale, if the monetary consideration is more than the value of the thing, okay? Now, if the same amount, yung monetary consideration at saka yung value ng thing, it is contract of sale. Now, let's take an example. If Pogi and Ganda entered into a contract wherein Si Pogi, ibibigay niya ang kanyang sasakyan kay Ganda worth 1 million peso in consideration of 400,000 pesos, a diamond ring worth 600,000 pesos. So, question, is the transaction a sale or a barter? Answer. It depends on the mutual intent of the parties. Okay? Kung ano ba yung intention talaga ni Pogi at ni Ganda. Now, if the intent is not clear, then the transaction is barter. Bakit? Kasi yung value ng diamond ring is mas malaki kaysa sa monetary consideration na three, I mean 400,000 pesos lang. Okay? So, that's it. Let's proceed with Article 1469 to Article 1474. So, we will be discussing price, okay? So, let's begin with Article 1469. Ganito yan. Siyempre, dapat yung price is certain. Kasi, if not, then in short, there is really no true consent between the parties. Diba? Malamang pala, Wala pang meeting of minds. 
if ever was hindi naman certain kung magkano ba ang purchase price, right? Now, sabi ni Article 1469, para maging price certain, it is sufficient that it be sold with reference to another thing certain, okay? Or number two, the determination thereof be left to the judgment of a special person or persons. But then, okay, it is understood na etong dalawang to, tong dalawang instances na to, is applicable lang pag walang specific amount that was really stipulated by the parties. Okay? So, kung hindi naka-specify kung yung exact amount talaga, then either of the two, pero kung merong stipulations, may exact amount, then yun yung controlling. Okay? Don't get confused. If walang stipulations ng exact amount in their contract, sabi ni Article 1469, it is sufficient that it be so with reference to another thing certain. So let's take an example. Eto. If Pogi offered for sale to Ganda 100 pair of shoes, tapos Ganda asked for the price ng shoes, pair, ano, each shoes. So Pogi told Ganda that the price is 10% less than the price ng previous inventory. So, question, is the price certain? The answer is yes. Kasi nga, it is with reference to another thing certain. If yung price ng previous inventory ng mga sapatos is 500 pesos, then less than 10% of that is 450 pesos, di ba? So, determine, And so, it is a price certain because it has a reference to another thing certain. Now, let's proceed with the deter determination by a specified person. General rule, yung price as determined and fixed by the specified third person is actually binding between the parties. Okay? And no yung exception? It is also found in Article 1469 paren. When the specified third person acted in bad faith or by mistake. If yung tao na yun, intentionally, dinisregard niya talaga yung instruction ng party sa pag-determine ng price, then he acted in bad faith. By mistake is, hindi naman intentional, but he acted contrary doon sa instruction ng parties, then by mistakes. Now, nasa part, I mean article 1469 din, Kung ano yung mangyayari if that third person acted in bad faith or by mistake. It is, sabi ni Article 1469, it is then the court that will fix the price. If ever, yung third person acted in bad faith or by mistake. Diba? Now, another scenario is, should such person or persons be unwilling or unable to fix the price? then the contract shall be inefficacious. Yun yung sabi ni Article 1469. Siyempre kasi, if, what, if unwilling or unable yung third person na yun to fix the price, then in short, walang price certain, di ba? Unless, subsequently, agree upon the price. So, yun, hindi magiging inefficacious. So, eto, where such third person or persons are prevented from fixing the price or terms by fault of the seller or the buyer, the party not in fault may have such remedies against the party in fault as are allowed the seller or the buyer as the case may be. So, it is actually either recession ng contract or pwede rin siyang mag-demand ng fulfillment. Now, if the innocent party choose fulfillment, then yung court na rin yung mag-fix ng price. Okay? So, eto, note. Important ito. I just want to mention it. Na yung failure to pay the agreed price does not cancel a sale for lack of consideration. Kasi yung consideration is yung price. Okay? Na napag-usapan, hindi nga lang nasunod. Merong agreed price, merong consideration sa contract nila. Same way if yung perang binayad ay peke pala, okay? If it is fake, 
we cannot fully say na walang consideration kasi I mean, hindi yung fake currency ang consideration. The real consideration is still the value or the price agreed upon. Yung price na napag-usapan. Anyway, pag ganyan, yung remedy ng unpaid seller is an action to collect the balance or pwede rin to rescind the contract. Okay, so overall, and to simplify or summarize Article 1469, it provides for instances when we can say that the price is certain. First, when it is expressly stipulated, diba? Second, when it has reference to another thing which is certain. Third, when it is fixed by a third person. And fourth, when it is fixed by the court. Okay, so that's it. That's Article 1469. Let's proceed with Article 1470. Gross inadequacy of price does not affect a contract of sale, except as it may indicate a defect in the consent or that the parties really intended a donation or some other act or contract. So gross inadequacy of price. In an ordinary contract, yung general rule, yung inadequacy naman talaga ng price does not affect its validity. Okay? So long as nag-agree yung dalawang parties, then no problem. Okay? But sabi ni Article 1470, except if it may indicate a defect in the consent. So kailan ba yan? Di ba? Pag yung consent was obtained through fraud, mistake, or undue influence. Remember our oblicon discussion. Dahil may defect yung consent, meaning the contract can be annulled. Hindi dahil sa inadequacy ng price, but because the consent is vitiated. May defect na, di ba? It indicates a defect in the consent. So, another reason is if pag sobra-sobra na talaga, ang sabi is if the price seems too inadequate as to shock the conscience of man. Now, in case of judicial sales, inadequacy of price will not set aside a judicial sale. Exception pa rin, if the price seems too inadequate, as to shock the conscience of the court. It's as simple as that. Let's not complicate things. Punta na tayo kay Article 1471. Article 1471. If the price is simulated, the sale is void, but the act may be shown to have been in reality a donation or some other act or contract. So if your price is simulated, the contract of sale is void. However, Pwede siyang maging valid donation or some other agreement or contract. Provided na yung requirements for donation or that other agreement are complied with. Kasi as a sale, yung contract is void. Dahil nga simulated ang price, okay? It is not merely voidable. Claro, expressly provided in Article 1471. Void daw pag simulated ang price, okay? Example, nag-execute sila ng deed of sale, making it appear na may sale nga nangyari, but in truth, ang gusto naman talaga ni seller is to transfer the ownership of the land or the property for free, okay? Gratitously. So, in this case, the sale is void, but it may be a valid donation, right? So, tingnan na lang nila yung mga requirements for a valid donation. If kung na-complied yun, then meaning there is a valid donation na nangyari, okay? So, that's it. That's Article 1471. Let's proceed with Article 1472. It provides for another instances or scenarios wherein yung price is mako-considered din siya na certain in case naman ito ng mga sale for grains, securities, liquids. This is really better explained through example. 
So, ganito lang din. If Pogi offered for sale to Ganda, 100 sacks of rice. Now, Ganda asked for the price per sacks. And then, Pogi told Ganda that the price per sack is, say, 100 pesos less than the price in Beauty's store. So, if the price at beauty store is 2,000 pe pesos, okay? Then, meaning yung price ng rice ni Pogi is 1,900 per sack, right? So, ganun. That is also considered as price certain. That's it. That's Article 1472. Let's proceed with Article 1473. The fixing of the price can never be left to the discretion of one of the contracting parties. However, if the price fixed by one of the parties is accepted by the other, so the sale is perfected. Anyway, kailangan pa ba natin i-explain si Article 1473? Well, same with other ordinary contracts. Sa contract of sale, dapat... Both parties mag-agree, di ba? Hindi pwedeng yung isa lang. Hindi pwedeng yung mag-fix ng price ng contract of sale is left to the discretion of one party. Kung maga siya lang talaga yung mag-decide. However, if yung price is fixed by one party and then inaccept ng isang party, then there is a perfected contract of sale, right? Example, if Pogi sold to Ganda his piano, now it was agreed na si Ganda siya yung magfi-fix ng price, okay, a week later. And so, after a week, Ganda named the price, sabi niya, 1 million peso. So, Pogi agreed. The question now is, is the sale perfected? Yes, kasi nagkaroon ng meeting of minds. Sabi si Ganda yung mag fix and then Ganda said 1 million pesos and Pogi accepted the price. So there is a perfected contract of sale, right? That's it, that's article 1473. It's as simple as that. So let's proceed with the last provision I did discuss natin tonight or today. And so article 1474, so eto. Effect if yung price cannot be determined. So, if cannot be determined, ang sabi, void, inefficacious, di ba? The buyer cannot fulfill his obligation. So, both parties, si seller is not obliged to deliver and si buyer is actually not obliged to pay. Another scenario is if na deliver na and nagamit na ng buyer yung thing. Hindi na rin naman pwede that he will enrich himself at the expense of the seller. So, dapat talaga magbayad siya. And what amount? Sabi, reasonable price. Okay? So, reasonable price is actually, sabi ni Article 1474, is a question of fact dependent on the circumstances of each particular case. Anyway, let's take an example. Ganito. If Pogi sold his car to Ganda, si Ganda nga daw yung mag determine ng price. Now, if eto si Ganda, kinuha niya lang yung sasakyan ni Pogi and then she refuses to fix the price, okay? She simply took the car and then refuses to fix the price. Question, is Ganda obliged to pay the price? The answer is obviously, yes, of course. She is still obligated to pay, to pay the price. Bakit? Kasi the law states that actually we can apply Article 1473, diba? Sabi nga, the law states that the fixing of the price can never be left to the discretion of one of the contracting parties. Dito, it was left to the discretion of Ganda. And then Ganda refuses to fix the price, okay? So... Although the act is illegal, but it will not affect the validity of the sale since Ganda accepted the delivery and actually appropriated, diba? She appropriated the car of Pogi. And so, she must pay a reasonable price according to Article 1474. And so, if the parties cannot agree on a reasonable price, 
logic would dictate anyway then the court will decide and so taking into consideration the circumstances of the situation or the case so that's it that's article 1474 and that ends our discussion for today thank you for watching until the end if you find this video helpful please like subscribe and click that notification bell for updated class when you upload video uploads namin thank you bye bye